Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video on the Camlink 4K from Elgato. Actually, this video is about how to use a DSLR camera as a webcam. Now, there are a number of different brands that have released software updates to their cameras that allow you to use your camera, your fully fledged camera, as a webcam. That includes Canon, Panasonic, and Fuji you often find those bits of software don't necessarily do a fantastic job or work with all cameras. Now, as an example, I have a Panasonic Lumix GH4. The software update from my Panasonic won't work with my camera. So I wanted to find an alternative that I could use to then plug in my camera to my PC and use my camera as a webcam. This is a great way to improve the quality of your webcams. Obviously it can be used on Zoom, Teams and whatever else, but I'm using it with OBS Streamlabs and OBS to then use on Twitch to present a much better looking camera feed. The Camlink 4K is a great alternative to using the software for a number of different reasons. Now this device is pretty hard to get hold of but it is fantastic. As you'll see in the box you essentially get the Camlink 4K capture card and an extension lead and that's basically what you need as standard and what this does is it basically uses the HDMI output on your camera to then put that into your PC via USB and I'm going to show you the process for setting that up as I go through. This is a tiny little dongle that plugs into your PC really easily. It's worth noting that the Camlink 4K is interesting for a number of reasons. It also supports a mass of different cameras and I'll link to that in the description. So for example it will work with my Lumix GH4 where the official Panasonic software won't I'll link in the description to the list so you can find to see if your camera is compatible but it's really dead simple to do. There are a number of other things that you will need though. For example you'll need an HDMI cable. Here I have an HDMI to mini HDMI cable that I bought from Amazon that then plugs into my GH4. My GH5 that I have as a separate camera uses full HDMI leads so it's really going to vary depending on what camera you have, how you set it up but it's pretty simple. So on the Lumix GH4, for example, there's a flap on the side that you have access to that then lets you plug in an HDMI lead. And this is generally used to display the feed from the camera on a television or a monitor so you can see a live feed of what's going on or playback footage and images. However, now what we're going to do is essentially use this as a live feed that then will be used for the live streaming and make the camera into a USB webcam of sorts. And it's a really simple setup in that way. And this is a fantastic fantastic thing to do if you've got a camera laying about that you're not using and you're fed up with using your old webcam either on your laptop or on your PC and you want to upgrade. It's a nice way of putting that camera to use or just upgrading your stream quality or the footage of your webcam if it's something you're interested in doing. Now obviously once you've plugged that in you need to find a way to mount your camera so that it'll actually have a good view of you. I'm using a tiny little Manfrotto tripod combined with what is essentially an extension for a Ronin S gimbal. Now that extension is actually available to buy really cheaply and basically what I've done is created a sort of monopod thing. It isn't able to be angled at very many different angles or anything but it works for what I want. It sits perfectly above my monitor and then gives me a decent view of the world. I'll link to these two things in the description. They're both pretty affordable optional extras you can buy. You might be able to find something else like a grip or something. It's really going to depend on the size and weight of your camera as well. Obviously you don't want to precariously balance a DSLR on top of your monitor but perhaps you might have a shelf or something that you could put it on as an alternative. I like this though because the Manfrotto means that you can adjust the angle and tilt of the camera ever so slightly that as you can see it is possible that it will fall over if I do it too much so really very minimal adjustment but this carbon fiber-esque pole from the Ronin S which is based an extension for that it just has a simple standard camera thread mount that allows you to mount it on top of there. The next thing to buy is a live power pack. This is an adapter for the camera which essentially means that you don't need to worry about your batteries running out of charge in the middle of using it. This basically replaces the standard battery and as you can see plugs into the camera. Now this is obviously going to vary again from camera to camera but you can usually find these adapters on Amazon or elsewhere pretty easily. I'll link to the one I'm using in the description so you can see and that'll work with Lumix camera because this works with the GH4 and GH5. Essentially you're plugging it 
into the mains via this adapter and then plugging that battery pack straight into the camera itself. It's a hollow thing, it's basically just giving live power straight to the camera, it means that you can have the camera on for hours and hours without any fuss and it's really easy to use and as you can see it plugs in fairly easily. It's also a lip on my camera that allows you to plug it in without leaving the battery flap open. And then the end result is the camera is now sitting behind my monitor with whatever lens you choose and obviously the key light air on the right hand side to give me better lighting and then you can then turn it on and immediately it's recognized by the computer as a USB camera and you can see just turning it on and even just going into the camera settings there it is immediately. Do need to adjust the light to make sure it can pick me up and obviously the things that you need to do are adjusting the lighting ISO and other settings on the camera itself. But here you can see it in action just opening up Windows camera settings and you'll see at the top you can flip between the different cameras so if you have multiple cameras installed you can do it. Now I'm going to show you the process of setting up an OBS Studio as well. This is dead simple and you can use the same logic in OBS Streamlabs. You're basically going in and picking a video capture source, you're probably already familiar with this if you've used OBS in any way, and creating a new one. Once you do that you then see the camera listed as an option so I recommend naming it a logical thing and you'll see from the various options in the drop down you'll see the Camlink 4K. Now the Camlink 4K is interesting because it allows your camera to use its full capture capability is a 4K capture card so if your camera is 4K as mine is you can then capture at 4K. Now obviously I'm going to be downscaling to 720p or 1080p depending on your bandwidth when you're streaming on Twitch or whatever else but it means the initial quality is a lot better and so the end result is a much better looking image of yourself on that feed. You can obviously then also shrink down and crop as appropriate. In this case I'm just holding alt and dragging the corners to cut it in so it looks a lot nicer and then I'm gonna have a green screen in the background and if you want to see that in action check me out live streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the weekends and you'll see what it happens and what it looks like and it's pretty good quality. The other thing to bear in mind though is that anything displayed on your camera may well be displayed on the feed as well. So for example you'll note that my ISO is appearing there and I also have the heads up sort of displays for the levels and where the aim is focusing the auto focus is focused so you can see you've got a little crosshair there and some other bits. You need to go into your camera settings and turn off things like that, the histogram, guidelines, anything that might show up on the feed and I recommend diving into the camera settings and doing it that way or you can crop the things out by just cutting your feed down and getting them out of the way but you can't do these sorts of things within OBS or OBS Streamlabs. You need to do it on the camera yourself. You also need to bear in mind light changes in the room and make sure you got the ISO set up properly on the camera proper. So there's less software controls when you're in Windows. It's more hardware based on the camera itself, but the quality is much, much better than you're gonna find on any of the standard webcams you get, depending on your DSLR camera, of course, but in my instance, it's got a decent lens and a decent camera that captures at 4K. The result is a much clearer quality, and this is obviously excellent for streaming purposes and for uh, video on Skype, Teams, Zoom, or whatever else you use. So it's really nice and easy way to do it. So a few different bits that you need. Camlink 4K, HDMI cable that plugs into that and then into your PC, a live power source, and then obviously just no, you're away and it works really nicely and it's dead easy to set up. Hopefully you found this video useful. Now, it is worth noting that there are alternatives as well. You can purchase, for example, on Amazon a much, much cheaper HDMI capture card, which doesn't seem to have a brand and there's a number of them available. You can see this one here. This cost me £20, which is about $25, so it's considerably cheaper than the Camlink 4K. However, it only captures at 1080p, so even if you're putting a 4K source into it, it's downscaled and it comes out at 1080p instead so the quality isn't as good. I also found that it got really hot during use but it is an interesting alternative if you can't afford the Camlink 4K but still want to do this or you can't get hold of a Camlink 4K or perhaps if like me you want to set up multiple cameras and stream from multiple ones at the same time. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching.
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.